All right, it looks like it's working. Let's go. Let's go. Please, Lord, please. Let's go. I don't know about you guys, but once once you know the truth and know, once you know what the world's all about, how could you possibly love the world anymore? Before I got converted, I have a video from Vlad Iwer where I was down I was down in Cancun and we were videotaping commercials for VH1 and MTV. And um, I remember doing a smack handshake with my cameraman and going, man, I love what I do. I love my, I just, I, you know, I was just like, I just love what I get to do and the whole vampire skydiving thing. And, you know, camping out, when I say camping out, I don't mean like camping out. I mean, hanging out on the beach in Cancun and doing all that stuff. I was so worldly guys. I was so completely worldly. And, um, I just thought, you know, doing this kind of stuff was so cool, but in the back of my mind, inside of me, I knew there was something seriously missing. And I'm trying to give back to anyone and everyone that wants to find out what that thing is that's seriously missing. I want to give it back to you. It's called your soul, your connection to the Lord God. See, you lost your direct connection when you came into the system because the system is duplicitous. It's good and evil. So as when an angel comes into a host body, now he's in a system that is designed to destroy him and his mind becomes duplicitous and the the flesh rules i mean the the sins of the flesh just rule everybody that's why you have to turn back to the lord with all your heart and if you don't the flesh destroys you the flesh is called the kelepot in jewish kabbalistic cosmology and the kelepot is represented by an 11 pointed star which is what the statue of liberty is standing on 11 pointed star which is represents literally your host body that's the geometry the geometric figure that represents your host body is an 11 pointed star called a hindecogram and it's called the calipot it means a shell a peel a husk your shell your peel your husk is your body and the statue of liberty is standing on top of it representing that she rules over you and she's holding her torch up. I don't know if most people know this, but uh, the Statue of Liberty is considered to be Isis and Thamul. It's also Hecate, the triple moon goddess. Think of it. You got the hindecogram with the two points at the top facing, going opposite directions. So one face this way, one face that way. And then the Statue of Liberty looking right out straight. It's Hecate, guys, holding the torch. It's alchemy at its finest. It's the taking of an angel and transmuting it into a freaking locust from the pit. Uh, I mean, I, I'll show you all the symbology in this folder. I'll give you the folder to look at it all yourself right now. Why was the Statue of Liberty given to us? Do you know where it came from? From a F Freemason? Augustine, I think, whatever, Frederick, or... I have his name in the folders. It's been a long time since I I did the Statue of Liberty thing. But did you know it's modeled after a Muslim woman? Did y'all know that? The Statue of Liberty is modeled af was modeled after a Muslim woman. Yes, I'm going to pull this up. It also turns green. It wasn't originally green. Did you know that? It took the salt air and all that uh, weather to change the metal to a chloros green i wonder what the odds are on that are y'all getting this a muslim woman in the end a woman will compass a man it's standing on the shore watching the sun coming up from the east helios the personification of the sun it's a face looking right at it and the the hindecogram are two faces going opposite directions the twin system the thamuel twin system but in the dead center the statue's face looking that way so it's the face and then two faces this way hecate holding the torch i mean come on it's so obvious now the lord's given me all the knowledge and information to prove it's true and i've given it out again and again so i'll do another little 
blurb on the Statue of Liberty. I'll give you the folders for sure. They're all at your disposal. Um, but I want to talk about what's going on right now. Okay. Ready? Y'all remember in 2007 when Jonathan Kleck prophesied, Behold the man of peace, Barack Hussein Obama, will come forth from the sea and with words of peace he'll bring chaos and destruction. Do you remember when Obama was up there in the Denver Broncos Stadium saying, Yes, we can. Did you ever look at his face? Change has come to America. He didn't say it in a, in a way like, Change has come to America. He didn't have a smile on his face. He had a look on his face like, Y'all got it coming. Have y'all ever looked at it? I used to do videos on I was like, This is not a good thing he's saying. Change has finally come to America. He's looking around like, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh change what does it play backwards as like a backwards baffling wind which the bible talks about a backward ba baffling wind yes we can becomes thank you satan i played it in all the videos the stage that obama was on he wanted to have the altar of pergamum that's over at the museum i believe it's in uh the Berlin Museum, he wanted to have it deconstructed and brought to the U.S. And, and so he could give his acceptance speech on the altar of per Pergamon. That's called the seat of Satan. And they said, no, go look it up. And then instead, he just built a replica of the seat of Satan. He's standing on a stage that's a replica of the seat of Satan. And he's going, yes, we can. Yes, we can. And you play it backwards. It's thank you, Satan. Thank you, Satan. Okay, I I did a video. It's on the Click Files. It's called the Sun Rising in on the Sun Rising in the West. The Antichrist unveiled. Just go to Click Files. Watch it. The Sun Rising in the West. The Antichrist unveiled. If you want to see stuff that is just absolutely mind-boggling. Just go watch that video. It had, I think, probably 8 million views. They got targeted like a lot of... I did a video called Destruction of America. Probably 5 to 8 million views down. Mm -hmm. Had all these factual, all this factual information in it down. But here's the point. What's going on right now? Let me show you some headlines. NBC News admits Obama secretly advising Biden White House. Mainstream media claims Obama and Biden partnership has only been happening for five months. Well, y'all know that's not true because remember, I, I've shown you the videos, Maria Bartiromo and then Jen Psaki when she was the press secretary. She was like, well, uh, Barack and Biden talk regularly, like weekly. They're real friends not like Washington friends. And remember I showed Barack going over to the White House shortly after that because she was giving the press conference saying, hey, he's going to be over there at the White House. And when he went over to the White House, Obama, man, he wouldn't even talk to Biden. Biden looked like a lost eighth grader where no one would even talk to him. And, you know, because the cool kid was here. I mean, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Hang on. So, okay, so remember the reason I'm, really animated here i got a couple reasons one of the big reasons is look at what i said in 2007 and look at what's going on right now 87 billion dollars in equipment left over there to give to those guys uh because we had to pull out really quick you understand we're just going to leave them all the brand new and other otherwise used u.s military equipment that'd be a good way to arm somebody you leave them 87 billion. Wasn't it 87 billion in cash that was put on a plane and flown over to Iran at, under the cover of night during the Obama administration? Sure was. Y'all remember that? And they found out about, oh, well, it's money we owed them. Oh, why'd you put it on a plane in bullion and cash and fly it out overnight? <laughs> it's like, oh. I wonder, well, let's see, we're giving money to those guys and they're our sworn enemies to wipe us off the map. Don't worry, I'm not, I don't know those guys. <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh-huh. Is it starting to look stupidly obvious now? Uh-huh. And then, remember Biden? Oh, uh, remember the videos I showed you guys? I, I meet with my Islamic teacher every Wednesday for lunch. Jin Saki, well, Biden and Obama meet every week. <laughs> so was there another guy coming over for lunch for both of them or is 
Obama his teacher, or is some guy showing up to uh, show them both who the hidden imam is? <laughs> so stupid. Uh -huh. Well, the coming of the Mahdi shall be preceded by the sun rising from the place of its setting. That's the Hadith. I've shown it to you in lots of videos. It says it in the Hadith, you know, from Islam. The coming of the Mahdi shall be preceded by the sun rising from the place of its setting. Okay. Let me show you that real quick. Okay. So let me just run through, uh, let me just run through a little group of facts. Okay. Stanley Annum Dunham, Stanley Ann Dunham, Barack's mom. Okay, CIA asset, yes or no? Uh, looks that way. Um, married to Barry Sotero over in Indonesia, where the cult of Sabud is from. The cult of Sabud. And the founder of that is Bapak. And our friend named Barack. That's very similar, isn't it? The cult of uh, Sabud uh, uh, to worship the rising sun. Um, now, ready? Let's look at a couple things that are very strange. That's Stanley Ann Dunham's passport renewal, where it says Barack Hussein Obama So Barka. See it? S O E B A R K A H. Do y'all know what H A K R A B is in in Hebrew? Hakrab is scorpion. Do you know what Eos is? Goddess of the dawn, Lucifer. Scorpion, goddess of the dawn, Lucifer, on Barack's pa mom's passport. <laughs> I mean, there it is, right there. Barack Hussein Obama, Sobarka, Hakrab, Eos, Scorpion, goddess of the dawn, backwards, right there. Okay, by the way, this is Bapak, the the head of Sabud, and this is this is you know the guy that's on the passport renewal eos was a titan goddess greece she was the goddess of the dawn see eos eos goddess of the dawn right there and had two siblings helios okay thus by the way did y'all know the statue of liberty faces east watching the sunrise helios the personification of the sun that's what helios is coming up and rising that's what it is well, isn't it funny if you're look the Statue of Liberty is looking that way? Well, to the right and to the left, on the geometric shape she's standing on top of, are twin females facing opposite directions. Triple moon goddess, right there. It's a no-brainer, and it stands for the host body. That's what the Kelepot means. It means your body. It means your husk, your shell, and she's standing on top of it because you watch you're an angel you got your statue of liberty which is your body you got your own statue of liberty and now you're inside it and she is transforming you into a locust from the pit because if you don't get converted before you die you go to the pit and you become assimilated into their collective as a locust from the pit i've shown you the vocabulary in revelation 9 verse 11 revelation 9 11. okay now imagine this you're born into a host body. It's called the Statue of Liberty, right? The mother of exiles. So, oh, here's another exile. You got your body. Now you're in our system. Oh, triple moon goddess. Yep, you got your body, but now you have your own opposing direction attached to the pit. And now it's going to self-implode because you're going to cannibalize yourself. Cain and Abel. So the whole Bible and the manifestation of the Word of God was to show us the system we're in, who our enemy is, the serpent race that's taking over the whole host body system, and it's a battle between two different uh, sources, angel and a demon, within the host body system, and angels get trapped. And there's where the whole thing is uh, like made manifest. Free will. You cannot love God without free will. Otherwise, you're a robot. Otherwise, you're programmed. So when you have your free will to choose what you want to do and you come into this system, choose this day whom you will serve. If the Lord be God, then serve him. If Baal be God, then serve him. But the host body system itself was started by twin female energy. Twin female energy. It's a reptilian system. And then the angels that want to get their host bodies, they you get it. But now you're attached to the pit. Her feet take hold on hell. Her pedina, vagina, takes hold on hell. 
Hell hath enlarged herself beyond measure. The time of her judgment has come. Come out of her, my people, because we're in her system, because we have a host body. That's why you got to be born again. You have to be spiritually reconciled back to God. Once you get spiritually reconciled back to God, the only way home is when your body dies anyway, and then you go back. It's perfection in understanding what the world and life is all about. But without understanding their system, we couldn't have understood it. Let me ask you guys an honest question. Think about this. The Vatican's a snake. For those of y'all that have watched my videos, you know what? I better just pull one image up just so make sure everyone can see that the Vatican is a snake. Okay, here we go. I had a little problem here. Let me see. Okay, ready? So here we go. Here's the Vatican. It's a snake. Yes or no? Here it is from behind the crown. There is a split tongue sidewalk. So either that is a snake or that's not a snake. One or the two. Okay, here it is from an aerial view. See it right there? That's a serpent wearing a crown with its tongue sticking out. Here is the building next to it, Audience Hall. See it? See the head? See the body coming out of this body? So one body is coming out of this body. This represents a keyhole and, it, and also a pregnant serpent. And this is coming out of it. And here's a close-up of the head of this building right here. Audience Hall right here. Here's a close-up of the head. Now here's the thing. Can you imagine any human being that was able to deliver that and say, well, how'd you find that out, Johnny? Well, I was sitting there looking at Google Earth, and I was looking down at the Vatican, and it made an upside-down cross and a keyhole, and I heard the Lord say, come in at a 45-degree angle. I want to show you something. Okay, how else could I have seen it? So think about this. So I come in at a 45-degree angle, and I go, oh, my God, it's a serpent wearing a crown. There it is right there. See it? It's a serpent wearing a crown. Can you imagine the moment I had right there when I was like, oh, my God, it's a serpent wearing a crown. Ready? Here's what happened next. Then I heard the Lord say, you need to look at the window that's the mouth. And I was like, what? So you see right here the mouth? Okay, well, I heard the Lord say, you need to find that window in the Vatican. Okay, so I'm giving you a testimony because it's going to lead to where we're at right now. Ready? So can you imagine you're sitting there and all of a sudden the Lord tells you, come in at a 45 degree angle? Well, so anyone that wants to argue with me, how in the world did I show it to y'all? Okay, think about it. How did I collect show it to you? Doesn't the Bible say my sheep hear my voice? Yes or no? Does the Bible say that? Yes, it does. John chapter 10. My sheep hear my voice. Well, the night I got saved, Michael told me, Jonathan, learn to trust that little voice you hear now. That's God speaking to you. And my whole ministry started there. Okay, so when I heard the Lord say, come in at a 45 degree angle, and it turned into a big serpent work wearing a crown, I knew I was hearing from God. Duh. I mean, no brainer. There's the enemy. <gasps> the whole building's a snake. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is. It's a snake. Okay, ready? Then you hear, Jonathan, you need to come in at a 45-degree angle. Uh, uh, you, you need to go in the window. I need you to find that window. What's on the inside? I'm sorry. Ready? I'm just going to crash Dave real quick. He has no idea I'm going to call him. So, okay. Hopefully his memory works. <laughs> Dave, I got you on via audio. I'm doing a video right now. <laughs> okay, so Dave, check it out. Do you remember a long time ago when the Lord showed me the Vatican was a snake and I called you up and I told you I need you to find this on the inside. Do you remember what it was? Um, I don't remember. I know we were looking for the uh, 3D tour. Well, you know, you gave me the 3D tour. That's how you said, here, I can give you this. We were looking for the mouth of the serpent, remember? Yeah. Okay, and the way you delivered it was, you said, hey, I got a 3D tour you can use, right? So let me show you. I'm just going to keep you on the phone for a sec. So Dave's on the phone, and Dave, yes or no, did you send me the 3D tour of the Vatican? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and it's like where you just drop in. It has an aerial view of the Vatican. You just drop in from it. Yeah, 
Okay, so that's what you sent me. Okay, so I just want everybody to see. So right here, Dave sends this to me. All right, Dave, I'll tell you what. I'll let you go. Thanks for being a witness. Okay, okay. okay, bye. Okay, so check this out, guys. Look right here. Imagine, imagine you're me. I've already had people say, hey, Johnny, I drew a picture of you. And I'm like, well, why'd you draw a picture of me? And they're like, here, and they just give it to me. And there is a dead sheep on the picture they drew of me behind. One's behind my ear. The other one, another guy did. It was on top of my head. A dead sheep with its tongue sticking out. Someone did one in 2001 before I got saved named Marcel. It's in the folders. I'll show it to you again. And then another guy did it at Starbucks named Alex. He said, oh, hey, Johnny, I drew a picture of you. I go, yeah, okay, why'd you put the dead sheep behind my ear? And he went, do you know who you're speaking with? Okay, imagine you're me. Years previously, people at different times had drawn pictures of me with a dead sheep on the picture of my face with a snake eating me. Okay, imagine after that, you're looking at the Vatican and the Lord tells you you're on Google Earth and you're looking at an upside down cross and you hear the Lord say, Jonathan, come in at a 45 degree angle. I want to show you something. And you do what he says and the whole damn thing turns to a big snake wearing a crown, by the way, which is Satan. Satan is the snake. So the whole building turns to a snake wearing a crown. And then you hear the Lord say, find the, the window that's the mouth. Ready? Here's the window that's the mouth. Ready? There it is. You see that window right there? That's the mouth of the serpent. Okay, what's the mouth of the serpent? It's a bunch of angels. They're coming into the serpent. Okay, hang on. They're coming into the mouth of the serpent. Then, this whole thing is a big dead sheep. Look, there's the eye of the sheep. There's the eye of the sheep. Nostril, nostril, teeth. Okay, top of the head of the sheep. There's the ear. There's the ear. There's the eye. There's the eye. Nostril, nostril, teeth. It's a dead sheep. And then it becomes a male and female reproductive systems. Do you understand what you are actually getting to see? The mystery of everything. Right there. And then the Lord has just built on all this information. Now, okay, now I'm going to deliver to you what was delivered to me back in 2007. Out of the sea shall come fire and smoke and a devouring wind. Water as high as the walls of Jerusalem will cover the city by the sea. And great shall be the destruction of that city. Can you say New York? And behold, the great wall which holds back the abundance of the rivers shall burst forth, bringing the hand of the oppressor against you. Now, the word rivers means several things. It means actually a river, and it means the wall that's breaking is a dam holding back those rivers. But it also means the rivers, the production of the human host body system that have been going on since the beginning, all that different energy in those different bodies is going to burst forth in front of the whole world. And I know that because of the words that come after. And behold, the great wall which holds back the abundance of the rivers shall burst forth, bringing the hand of the oppressor against you. For I have seen it, says the Lord, for mighty is your enemy that has risen from within your own walls. From with, yeah, from within your own gates. Do you understand what that enemy is? I do because the very next words say it. And behold, the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet shall rise from within the walls of the temple to destroy the temple. So we have an enemy that's coming up from within our own country, within our own, I think the words were borders. Uh, mighty is your enemy that is risen from within your own borders. Well, think of the borders of our country and the borders of your body at the same time. Because then the next words are, and behold, the abomination that causes desolation standing in the holy place where it should not be. The abomination of desolation is that serpent seed that's taking over your whole body. You know, little deviants, they come from underground unleashing demon brothers. The sheeple are compliant and make for fine ingredients for customizing anything. Here come the little deviants. Remember? So they're rising from the depths to take those sheeple down. You know what the word rising is? Allah. Allah, I showed it to you in the video. Allah to rise. They're Allah from the depths to take those sheeple down. 
because see, you're a half sheep at part serpent. Good and evil, light and dark. Do you see it now? Do you see how perfect this is? And now, and behold, the great wall which holds back the abundance of the river shall burst forth, bringing the hand of the oppressor against you. For I have seen it, says the Lord. For mighty is your enemy that is risen from within your own borders. Now behold the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. The temple. Do you understand the abomination of desolation is rising within the host body system? Standing in the holy place where it should not be. Here is the mystery made known to you. You are the holy place of which I speak. And the abomination shall rise Allah, within the walls of the temple to destroy the temple. So now I'm bearing witness to the destruction of the temple, which is our host body, the third temple that nobody really understood. That's why the Twin Towers were bombed and they built a One World Freedom Tower instead. Do you understand? For mighty is your enemy that has risen from within your own borders. Think of the United States and then think of your body. Now behold the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place where it should not be. Mark 13, I believe. Here is a mystery made known to you. You are the holy place of which I speak and the abomination shall rise from within the walls of the temple to destroy the temple. For have you not seen? Have you not heard? Has it not been made known to you? When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they did bear children to them, and the same became mighty men. And has not the sea turned mighty? And the sea shall turn terrible before your very eyes. And the terrible one shall be elevated, Allah, within the sea. And behold, the man of peace, Barack Hussein Obama, shall come forth from the sea. The man of peace? Did you know Barack won the Nobel Peace Prize? After he was elected president, he didn't do anything to win the Nobel Peace Prize. But when I prophesied, behold, the man of peace, Barack Hussein Obama, shall come forth from the sea, and with words of peace, he'll bring chaos and destruction. Behold, the fig tree puts forth his leaves, and suddenly the time is upon you? I mean, can't you not see it now? Okay, now, if you can't see it, let's just go look at what people are saying the news pundits, people that are finally catching on, people in the government, all everyone's like, wait a minute. Everyone knows Biden can't tie his freaking shoe. But what about Lahaina? What about this dew weapon that just burned everything out with laser precision? Just burned it all out. Did you see all the symbology that was in the videos that I showed you? It was all about the rising sun. The coming of the Mahdi shall be preceded by the sun rising from the place of its setting. The coming of the one that will lead the Islamic Jihad worldwide. What's going on right now? They raised the black flag, the Khorasan black flag. What that means in the Hadith is when you see that black flag go up, every Muslim everywhere join in. It's time. That's what it means to destroy Jerusalem. And what about the U.S.? Well, the U.S. is considered synonymous with synonymous with Israel. We are considered by Iran, their, their whole ideology is destroy the United States, period, everyone. There is no peace with them. <laughs> it's like, it's insane. But I think we should give them some more cash. Maybe leave some arms over there. You know, for sure we should supply 87 billion or whatever it was. I think it was 87 billion, the same as the number of the amount of arms left over there. That's crazy. I wonder what 87 is in the Bible. You know what? Let's look that up real quick. So if you try and go on and find about the plane that flew off in the night with bullion and cash that went to Iran during the Obama administration, it's kind of hard to find. Just go look. You'll find it. It was a big scandal. Why are you flying all this cash to Iran at night in an airplane? without going through the proper channels. Why? Well, it's a good way to give them some cash, I guess. What about the $6 billion that Biden just gave them? Well, if it's not Biden that's running the show, then who gave it to him? Okay, you're starting to see the trend here. Again, the coming of the Mahdi, the Islamic leader that will lead the Islamic Jihad in the end of the world to destroy Israel and to destroy Christianity. Anyone that's a sheep, you'll either have to sign on to Satan's plan or be killed. 
That's what the Bible's about in the end. Let me show you. Ready? Watch. Let's go to this folder, see if I can pull it up right here. Um, here we go. Akrab Eos. Okay, so Eos was a goddess of the dawn, and that's what's on the um that's what's on the passport renewal for Barack. Here it is. I'm gonna show it to you one more time. Here you go. Ready? Here's Stanley Ann Dunham's passport renewal from Indonesia. Here's the back of it. Barack Hussein Obama Sobarka. Hawk Rob, ready? Look at it yourself. Names of stars and constellations. In Hebrew, right here. Look right here. In Hebrew, Hawk Rob is a scorpion. So Hawk Rob and then Eos, goddess of the dawn, Lucifer, scorpion Lucifer. That's his name backwards? Sobarka? Well, that's quite convenient. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, don't you think? There it is. Just look at it. Type it into Google. Uh-huh. Of course, I know the naysayers will, oh, it's not true, Clack. Whatever. Okay, then let's talk about Kenya not even being a country. Kenya wasn't even a country as it was printed on his birth certificate. Did y'all know that? Yeah. Go watch my videos. I'm not going to go over the whole thing. Go watch my older videos. Uh-huh. So his birth certificate was nonsense. Okay, let's talk about this. What is up with this? That's the sun rising over the stripes of the American flag. You see it? One, two, three stripes. It's the West. The sun rising from the place of its setting. Right out of the Hadith. The coming of the Mahdi shall be preceded by the sun rising from the place of its setting. Where does the sun set? In the West. So, the letter O, like the sun going up, rising over the three stripes of the American flag is the sun rising from the place of its setting. Well, if it's really Obama that's running Biden, then let's look at Joe Biden's logo. So if this was the sun beginning to rise, this is the sun fully risen over the West. You know, like, yes, we can. Remember, yes, we can. I think he did a statement the other day where he said, Remember we when we started in the United States, when he started, it was, yes, we can. Well, yes, we did. Let me see if I can find that for you real quick. All right. So without getting too terribly off on side tracks, so um, imagine when Barack Obama gave his acceptance speech on the altar of Pergamum, a replica of the altar of Pergamum that's called the seat of Satan in the Bible, saying, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can, which means backwards, thank you, Satan. Now, you either believe it actually is thank you, Satan, backwards, or you don't. But you know what? I can show you in the Bible where it says a backwards baffling wind, referring to them, a backwards baffling wind. So, let me hold on to this. Give me one second. Okay, ready? So before I do this, remember, I showed you there's a serpent race and a sheep race. Angelic is sheep because the Bible talks about Jesus coming to find his sheep. Okay, and the serpent race is the pit. And it's male energy from the top, female energy from the bottom. Energy, not genitalia. Energy running the host body. The two energies are trapped within the host body system, fighting for control of the soul is the goal. Okay, now in Revelation, we're told to come out of her because we're born into her. Why do you think it's called the mother of exiles? We're the exiles and she's our mother. The system is our mother. We're the exiles. That's why the Bible refers to us as exiles. Live out your lives as exiles, as sojourners, because we're in her system and she's attached to the pit. So the Bible tells us, come out of her, my people. Here's the way you come out of her. You turn back to the living God from heaven. You, you ask for forgiveness for your sins and you accept Jesus Christ as your proxy for your sins. So then he stands up in the midst of you because Lucifer is sitting in the midst of you, combining the good you to the bad you. Ready? Watch. 
Ready? Watch the Bible right here. And I heard another voice. I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her. Ready? Look at the word her. Pink. Ready? I'm going to click on it. A baffling wind backwards through the idea of a baffling wind backwards. See it right there? You know, kind of like Eos, goddess of the dawn, scorpion Eos, goddess of the dawn. Instead of, yes, we can, thank you, Satan. And we'll play that in a minute. So just remember what I showed you. Be ye not partakers of her sins. Ready? Look what the word partakers is. To share in company with. Oh my gosh. That is a co-participant in. To have fellowship with. Do you understand? Because when you're an angel and you've been yoked together with her in her host body system. She truly is the mother of exiles. She's your mother. She birthed you into the system. You got a body, but now you're attached to the pit. That's why the Bible says if your eye be single, your whole body's full of light. Because the light's from above. And when you get born again, you get two ups. Your eyes become single. for Until you're born again, you have one eye that's up, one eye that's down to the pit. That's what the all-seeing eye is. And you're walking around with your own locust on a string. It's perfect. Why do you think the Vatican's got corner posts of the canopy that have locusts? The word canopy means host body, flesh. So the canopy in the middle of the Vatican is separating the eye on the ceiling, which is an angel. And then the canopy separates that eye from the eye on the floor, which is a serpent. See, the canopy separates you from the eye on the ceiling. Do you get it? Your host body. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Okay, hang on one second. Okay, so here we go. Now, now, here we go. Do not be partakers of her sins. It's her system. That's why she's standing the Statue of Liberty on top of the calipot, which is the host body. Okay, now. <laughs> okay, ready? One more time. And I heard a voice. Okay, hang on one sec. Okay, one more time. And I heard another voice. Another voice. Ready? Another voice. Another, let's see, else, that is different. Another voice, another, that is a different. <laughs> more, more, one, another. Voice, through the idea of disclosure. A tone, art, articulate, bisial, or artificial by implication. An address for any purpose, saying a language. I heard another voice from heaven. Where was the voice coming from? From heaven. What was it saying to all of us? What was it saying to God's people? Come out of her. She's down. You got to turn back up. It's always up. 350 on a crino. Okay, now. Let me show you what's going on. Now, all these mainstream outlets are saying the same thing. Obama's the one that's been running it. No kidding. This is his third term. Do you think the election was legit with Trump? Do you think it's real that they're trying to sue Trump on the stupidest crap ever heard of? Do you think what they're doing to him is right? Of course not. They got to keep him out of the way to, so he doesn't interfere with the global world takeover plans. It's a no-brainer. Okay, so let me ask you an honest question. Yes or no? Do you believe this is represents the sun rising over the West? Do you believe this? Joe Biden's logo for his presidency. Do you believe this represents the sun fully risen over the West? It's a yes or no answer. So if it is, what does that mean for everybody? That means the sun is fully risen. Who's the sun 
Well, who are they talking about? Well, the coming of the Mahdi, which is the Islamic leader that's going to start the whole thing. Well, isn't it weird we're giving all this money to Iran to empower them? And their number one motto is destroy the U.S. and kill Israel? Like, we have no right to exist. Why would you give them one dollar? Why would you do one thing to accommodate them? If they're hell-bent on destroying every one of you, does it make any sense? Of course not. So now, it looks like things are shaping up and everybody's starting to recognize, wait a minute, what's going on? And mighty is your enemy that is risen from within your own borders. Oh, like of the country. And behold the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place where it should not be. You are the holy place. And the abomination shall rise from within the walls of the temple. Allah to rise. I showed it to you in the other video. In Hebrew, rise is Allah. Mm -hmm. To rise. Okay, now watch. So let's just look at a few pictures, you know, just to kind of get a little bit of a, you know, <laughs> a little bit of a perspective. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Okay, there's Biden and there's the man behind the curtain. There it is. There's his logo and there's what's going on. Pretty fascinating. If you ask me, if you have eyes to see, um, then... Let's take a look at the Statue of Liberty for what it really is. There you go. There's the Statue of Liberty right here. And she's on top of her 11-pointed star with the two triangles at the top right here. It's just like right here. See, like Statue of Liberty, Statue of Liberty. Host body, host body. Calipot, Calipot right here. 11-pointed star, 11-pointed star. One, two up top. The two up top become one at the bottom. Follow it down. See, this one and this one, one goes this way, the other one goes this way, and when they get to the bottom, the two become one. Just like the Twin Towers, just like the Twin Towers going the opposite direction, when they get together, the two become one. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There you go. Housing the essence of holiness, the Kelepot, but it's inherently evil. So the host body system is inherently evil, housing the essence of holiness. Here, here you go. Ready? The covenant of death. 2,977 people were killed, they say, they say, in the Twin Tower bombing. That's how many they said were dead. Did you guys ever see what 2,977 means? So it means done in secret. Secretly. See it? Secretly privately done in secret so the number of people that were killed in the bombing of the twin towers which represents the twin system just like every angel that's been murdered from the beginning of time it's been done in secret within the host body done in private secretly that was the whole deal now we know it's horrifying but it's the truth it's absolute reality now, let me show you something really interesting about, I want you all to read this word right here. See that word right there? Read that word. Say it out loud. And then look at its structure right here. I want you to look at its structure. You see that structure? Now, you see this E pluribus unum thing? It's the same exact structure. You see it? Do you know what got put in everybody? Uh-huh. There you go. That's what got stuffed in a whole bunch of people and now let me show you what's in the middle of the calipot there's the middle of the calipot i've actually turned it upside down though that's the middle of the calipot once it's been inverted the star has been turned upside down which is the goal of the enemy to turn the angel upside down that's the center of the Kelepot. Let me show you this. Okay, so very quickly, let me show you the symbology is everything. So, Statue of Liberty. Now, don't forget, there's one face that's facing forward. And then behind her, there's two triangles, just like this triangle and this triangle. Now, those two triangles represent faces going the opposite direction. I'll show you that in just a moment. And in the center... You know what? I'm sorry. I switched a little too soon. And in the center, there's that thing that looks the same as the E Pluribus Unum, many in one, 
that's the same as graphene. Mm -hmm. See it? What's in the dead center? A five-pointed star representing one of God's angels. Well, how do you destroy them? You attach male energy with female energy. Let me show you. Right here. I'll, do, I'll use these two right here. Ready? Here's male representing an angel. Female energy. And you interlock the two. And you have the system. There it is. That's the serpent eating its own tail. Now, if you'll simply look right here. See the triangle facing up? Now you have one facing down, interlocked, and then watch this. You know, Vampire Academy, that's what you have, vampiric system, like Vampire Academy. Okay, and it manifests everywhere, and so let me give you a good idea of forbidden fruit. That's the serpent system, duality. See the F going one direction, the F going the other direction. Here's the serpent's head making an apple. You see it? The forbidden fruit is you come into the host body system and you're dualistic now. You're good and evil. See, the tree of the knowledge of good we're and evil. Now you're attached to the and evil part. Do you get it? Angels are good. And evil is the host body system that's attached to twin female energy from the pit. So when the angel comes in, he's trapped in a host body and that other energy destroys him. When you die, your soul goes to the pit, and then you are assimilated by a locust. Watch. I'll prove it right now. I'll go straight to Revelation 9. That's why they have locusts on the corner post. Re Revelation 9. And the shapes of the locust look at a form, a resemblance, a similitude to assimilate, to become like, to be made like. So when you go to the pit, you are made like into a locust because the Vatican has the guy in the slave collar. When you turn him upside down, he's a locust. You get it? This is perfection, guys. This is, And here we are at the end, and it's all proving out. That's why I'm so excited. This is all proving out. Now, look at what the Statue of Liberty is really holding in her hand. That's what it really is. Uh-huh. Now, let's go back to the Arch of Washington. I showed this to you in the other video. Ready? So here's the Empire State Building. Again, I have a folder where I've drawn in. This is an eye. This is an eye. This is the mouth. This is the top of the head. It represents the two pillars, the serpent being. It's no different than right here where Madonna was dancing between the two pillars while she was singing. Not everyone's coming to the future. Not everyone that's here is going to last. They just show you right in front of you what they're doing because they know the population is asleep. You have to turn back to God to arise and wake up. Arise, O oh sleeper, wake up from the dead because you've been attached to the dead. You have life and the dead in you, death, they're entities. Mm -hmm. Here we go. There's the Statue of Liberty standing right alongside the two different DNAs. And here you go. Now, ready? Next picture, please. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so the system, the, the dead center of the system is a right side up triangle interlocked with an upside down triangle. In the dead center, that's the angel right there. Five point star head, arm, arm, leg, leg. Well, the goal is to turn him upside down. And that's the end of the that's the end of the system. That's the end of the system for the angel where he's completely and utterly destroyed and he's turned into a locust from the pit. Here's a new line of clothing that came out called cloak. C L and see the word O A K O A K, how it's blurred out because our God, referred to as El the Almighty God, is a ram or an oak. An oak, and they're making fun of us. See it? Cloak? Watch this. You want to see a crazy shirt? Here it is. There you go. Right in front of you. Cloak. C-L-O. One's an angel. One's a demon. Look at that. I mean, there it is. I mean, there is the manifestation of what I'm telling you from the Bible. Right there. <laughs> it's right in front of you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, you ready? 
Okay, I think I've shown you enough of this for you guys to understand. Wow, it's been coming for a long time. Let me show you a couple more images of maybe, uh, here's the sun starting to rise. Here's the rising sun. Here's O'Biden's logo right here. And now let's get to what the pundits are saying and what they're saying out in the world in front of everybody now. Here you go. One moment. Okay, so here's a uh, here's a couple things y'all should look at. This is the White Rock folder. Uh, if you want to understand, the Statue of Liberty right here. Statue of Liberty is modeled after a Muslim woman. Go, just go look at the. Uh, Did you know that the Statue of Liberty is actually a Muslim woman? The statue was designed by a French artist named Frederick Auguste. He visited Egypt in 1855 during the French occupation. Frederick wanted to build a statue on the coast of the Suez Canal named Egypt Bringing Light to Asia. It featured a tall Egyptian woman. Do you see Usama. the torch she's holding? Okay, hold that thought for one moment. Here you go. Here's Hecate, the triple moon goddess right here. Here she is. There she is holding the torch. Hecate. There it is. Here she is again. Hecate holding the torch. What's she burning? Well, what does it look like she's burning right here? A skull, huh? I wonder who that could be of. You think the male energy? Of course it is. It's the angels that came into the system. Because the Statue of Liberty is the triple moon goddess. The face going one way. And on the two sides, it represents the opposing directions. Like I showed you, the FF, Forbidden Fruit, was the host body, the dualistic system. Here we go. Okay, now I'm going to play this little video twice so I know you got to hear the audio. Ready? So let's do this twice. Did you know that the Statue of Liberty is actually a Muslim woman? The statue was designed by a French artist named Frederick Auguste. He visited Egypt in 1855. Did you know that the Statue of Liberty is actually a Muslim woman? The statue was designed by a French artist named Frederick Auguste. He visited Egypt in 1855 during the French occupation. Frederick wanted to build a statue on the coast of the Suez Canal named Egypt Bringing Light to Asia. It featured a 90-foot tall Egyptian woman named Um Salma wearing a traditional robe called a galabeya and holding a torch. However, both the French and Egyptian governments rejected the idea of building this statue. So Frederick headed to New York. His idea for the Statue of Liberty at the New York Harbor, where immigrants first arrived, gained support from the U.S. government. After making a few tweaks to the design, we now have the iconic Statue of Liberty. Isn't it amazing how the influence of a Muslim woman became an emblem of liberty cherished by millions? Okay, now, okay, now, I listened very carefully to what Obama said about one of his statements. He said, well, it's, he said, well, what Hamas did is a terrible thing. It's, uh, what they did is a terrible thing. And he said, then he goes, but it's also true that what, what Israel do, is doing and they've killed millions or they've displaced millions. And he, he admitted the Hamas thing, but then he flipped the whole thing and totally, totally uh, demonized Israel completely. He tried to make it look like I'm going to start with Hamas and say what they did was terribly wrong and they shouldn't have done any of that. And it's really wrong what they did. But it is also true that, and then he just painted a picture of total Israel evil. That's what he did. Now, here we go. Ready? I'm going to play this the first 10 seconds twice. Obama, who we know is the real president of the U.S., what's he been up to, Rita? Well, yes, this is the man who was behind the Iranian deal, the man, yep. man who enriched. Obama, who... Obama who we know is the real president of the U.S. Obama, who we know is the real president of the U.S. What's he been up to, Rita? Well, yes, this is the man 
who was behind the Iranian deal, the man, yep. the man who enriched and emboldened the Iranian regime that funds Hamas. He's got some thoughts about what's oh. happening in oh. Israel and Gaza, and he um, uh, he thinks we're all complicit in, to of some degree. We are. Mm. <laughs> what Hamas did was horrific, and there's no justification for it. And what is also true is that the, the occupation and what's happening to Palestinians is, is unbearable. What is also true? It's sort of a way of saying but, James, isn't it, without <laughs> saying... Obama, who we know is the real president of the US, what's he been up to, Rita? Well, yes, this is the man who was behind the Iranian deal, the man, yep. man who enriched and emboldened the Iranian regime that funds Hamas. He's got some thoughts about what's oh. happening in oh. Israel and Gaza and he, um, uh, he thinks we're all complicit in, to some degree. Mm. <laughs> what Hamas did was horrific and there's no justification for it. And what is also true is that... And what is also true is that... If I'm really telling Biden what to do, I gave $87 billion in artillery or in uh, United States uh, uh, equipment for war to the Islamic uh, countries to be used at their disposal and sent them a bunch of cash. <laughs> and I gave them a bunch of cash too. So let's just be honest. Come on, just everybody just look through the stupidity of the veil. Okay, it's just ridiculous at this point. It's so obvious. Now, Let's look at some other people and what they're saying and just make a point. Then I'll let this one run. And I got a lot more. I want to show you the Statue of Liberty stuff. Here we go. Uh, hang on. Here we go. Let's see. Here with reaction is Victor Davis Hanson of the Hoover Institute. All right. You want to give a paradigm that kind of economics? Oh, yeah, it is. I think everybody realizes... Yeah, the last year of the Obama administration, he more or less checked out during the Clinton Trump race. And I feel he feels now that this would have been his third term and he could have been a lot more left wing. And he feels sort of regretful that people say, you know, you signed a hundred and fifty million dollar book deal, Netflix, you've got four mansions, Martha's Vineyard, Hawaii, Kalorama. You've kind of sold out, Barack, and now he wants to get back into the game. And he's got a great opportunity because Joe Biden is cognitively challenged and he's trying to push a more radical agenda than he felt uh, he could during his own presidency. And it's kind of ironic, though, Sean, with all of these mansions and with Michelle making $12,000 a minute speaking in Germany. And remember, Barack is probably, both of them are probably worth a half a billion dollars. And then to talk about uh, re rejection of material consumption or a more... Okay, and to go on, and he's running the White House and all the articles that are coming out over and over again saying the same thing. Katie McFarland with us this morning. His hands, I don't think his hands are clean. He messed up Iran in the first place. His hands are the dirtiest of all. I mean, the audacity of President Obama to come... His hands are the dirtiest of all. I mean, he messed up Iran hands. I don't think his hands are clean. He messed up Iran in the first place. His hands are the dirtiest of all. I mean, the audacity of President Obama to come out and say that everybody's made a big mistake here. Come on. He was the one that empowered Iran. He was the one that drove oil prices high and allowed Iran to sell oil on the international market. He dropped all those sanctions. So Iran got rich. He also paid money directly to Hamas. Why? Because he had this, quote, humanitarian aid to the Palestinians. Well, the humanitarian aid doesn't go to the Palestinian people. It goes to Iran. I mean, it goes to Hamas. Hamas steals the fuel. It steals the cement. It steals the food intended for the people, but Hamas uses it for its military purposes. And then finally, President Obama was the one who tried to negotiate with Iran to allow Iran to have nuclear weapons. So for him to to negotiate with Iran to allow Iran to have nuclear weapons. Tried to negotiate with Iran to allow Iran to have nuclear weapons. 
So for him to say everybody's hands are dirty, the dirtiest hands of all are his. Why do you think he's saying this at this particular time? Has it got anything to do with President Biden's political troubles here at home? So why are they doing these? Look, look, at, look right here. Look right here. Look at that. Look at that. You see the opposite direction triangles? You think that's an accident? Y'all know where you're at now? You're at the end of the world. <laughs> and I'm sorry I'm excited, but I've been waiting a long time for this because I was called in 2002 and I was let know that it was the end of the world in 2002. I prophesied in 2007. And the sea shall turn terrible before your very eyes, the sea of humanity. You want to see what's going on? Have you all seen all the different states in the United States where because that black flag went up? Have you seen all the rallies? Have you seen what's going on? Have you seen what happened in, I think, uh, this may be Germany? Let me show you something real quick. Let me show you this. This is in Cairo. Now, do y'all remember, do y'all remember uh, YG, you know, hunted for dinner, 400? What's really going on, the whole world is about one thing, an angel and a demon within a host body. The soul is the goal of Satan in every single host body. Every host body is being murdered in secret, just like it said on the Twin Towers, 2977, in private, secretly, done in secret, what? The two destroyed in secret, the, the angel and the demon system, the angel destroyed within the twin system done in secret so you could put the one world freedom tower in its place you get it it's all been right now you remember yg uh the y uh the rapper that has um the 400 clothing let's see yg rapper um album covers sorry see what happens where he's in a, let's see, images, where he's sitting in a bloodbath. Well, I don't see the one where he's sitting in his bathtub full of blood, but it's everybody wear red. There you go. Okay, stay dangerous, right? Yeah, he's got the dragon behind him. And then here he is. Ready? There you go. See him? He's that other race, sitting in a bathtub with blood. See it? Everybody wear red. Stay dangerous. YG. Makes clothing for little kids that says 400. Onesies for babies that say 400, hunted for dinner. That's kind of sick, YG. I don't think God's probably going to be really, I don't think he's going to let that one slide, just to be honest. But. You ready to see Cairo? Remember they went, they they raised that black flag over the Coruscant. Remember I showed you the video Coruscant. Does that look like that's starting to be a thing? <laughs> you bet. Have you seen all the different states in the United States where the whole thing is gaining all this momentum? Yeah. You know where you're at now? We're getting very close, guys. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop this. I have a ton more stuff. Hopefully, everything works. This is only in an hour and three minutes. So I'm going to load this up. I love you guys in Christ. Let's get a hug going. And then I'll try and keep going as long as I got, you know, some favorable wind in the sail right now. This is you. This is Johnny. <laughs> I love you in Christ. I think we're so close, guys. We have to be. Look what's going on. Everyone's coming out saying Obama's running the show. It is what it is. All right. Love you in Christ. One thing I would just like to put in this video before I end is the way that the Lord taught me to read their language is is it's a cryptic language. The letters 
C is the number three. The number three in the Bible is Abaddon, the angel of the abyss personified, which is the serpent. So the number three in the Bible is Abaddon, angel of the abyss personified as the serpent. See that word O-V-I-D -O right there? It equals sheep in Latin. 19 in the Bible means slaughter. So if the Vatican's a serpent and it's eating a bunch of angels in the form of a sheep, which I've already showed you a thousand times, that is a serpent, angel, sheep, slaughter, right? Vatican's a serpent. In the mouth are a bunch of uh, angels, which is one big sheep. Serpent, sheep, slaughter. The whole building itself. The Vatican's a serpent. It's slaughtering a sheep. The sheep is just made up of a bunch of angels. So wouldn't it be perfect to give everybody a stab that locks that right side up, upside down triangle thing inside of you? So once they initiate it, you can't get out. Do you get it? Right side up and upside down become interlocked within you once you get that little chip in your right hand or your forehead. This is perfection in understanding this, by the way. And it could only have been done by the grace of God. There's no way I could have figured any of this out. This is a gift from God. That's why my name means Yahweh has given. Okay? So serpent, sheep, slaughter. That's what that means right here. That's what that means. C is serpent. The number three is serpent. It's angel of the abyss personified, which is the serpent. That word right there in Latin is sheep. What do they sing the services in inside of the big snake? What language do they sing to Lucifer dawning his own creation in Latin? They sing in Latin, like the Latin mass. So serpent, which is what the whole building is. And then in Latin, the word Ovid is sheep. And then 19 is slaughter, meaning to turn. How do they slaughter us? They got us to turn. All right, guys, listen, I love you in Christ. I got to wrap it up. I got some things I got to go do.